it is my great pleasure to welcome to the microphone the Executive Chairman of the Seven Network, without whom we would be sweeping the streets probably out there in Murray Street and King Street tonight, Mr Kerry Stokes. Noted your comments, Ray. I'm sure David Leckie will take into account how proud you were tonight, what a good thing it was for you when he reviews your salary bit later. <laughs> I'm really pleased to be here tonight um, on many levels because I wasn't involved with Channel 7 at the time in 1959. I was still working for the first discounter in Western Australia, a company called Ron Shaw's, toiling away putting our first television antennas. So a few of us are still around from that period of time and every now and then I actually go around Perth and I can still see the antennas. <laughs> I, put up, I keep saying to myself, these guys are going to change the digital really soon. <laughs> but tonight it's all about celebrating Seven's 50 years. We heard from Ray about its start and we heard that we have Sir James Crothers here. And I'd like to also say we have Jocelyn Treasure and Brett Treasure here. Um, I think that um, I have a great deal of affection for Brian Treasure and I have a great deal of admiration for Sir James. I think that they were an interesting pair who came together at the right time. And lots been written about Sir James, but I can tell you another side of him. I did a documentary, which one of those things you shouldn't do, back in the 70s on the atomic bombs last in the Monte Bellows Islands. At that stage, part of the rare archival information we got was a very young James Crothers on the peninsula at Ons Onslow taking photographs and writing about the British blowing up our atolls with their atomic bombs. So they all go back in our history and, and part of this community for a long time. And we're here today because those two men led an incredible team of people. A team of people who were dedicated to doing something different, a team of people who decided that TVW would be a different station to the other stations in Melbourne and Sydney, and it actually charted its own course. And I can remember very clearly Brian Treasure having this great relationship with Disney, a personal relationship with Disney which saw Channel 7 in Perth have Disney on parade, uh, Disney on ice, uh, they built the entertainment centre, they did all this remarkable um, achievements while in the infancy of the industry. Only possible because they also came up with the other most innovative uh, part of all, and that was designing the spot card. And all these young salesmen, all our crash hot young salesmen today, who go out selling advertising in the media. It wasn't until Brian Treasure and sales team at Seven came up with the spot card rate that actually made it profitable places like TVW to be able to do its own production. And there are other people who came to Channel 7. Bob Hope Specials, Miss Universe, Michael Jackson, Sammy Davis Jr. It's an extraordinary lineup of talent being attracted to the wilderness. I'm sure with most of them who I did meet, um, they were equally surprised to find themselves here. <laughs> and then there are other people like Darcy Farrell the legend in our industry for news. Um, Darcy not only was, in my opinion, the best news director in Australia, he trained the best people who became news directors. And was really, I was really proud when we were fortunate enough to employ Peter Meekin some years ago um, because he'd worked with Darcy Farrell. And he brought with him that same dogged persistence that Darcy had and putting together the best news service in the country. <laughs> Channel 7 also brought across the best talent. Max Bostock, who I was talking with earlier, who ran Ziggy's Dance Hall in Melbourne. And I, as a young lad, I went there because that's usually where the best girls were if you could dance. <laughs> and not being so good at that, I actually didn't do so well. But I was surprised when, when Max packed his bags and came to Perth and did a sensational job with TVW in this Miss Universe and a whole lot of other contributions. <laughs> at the time when Channel, Channel 7 was floated, it was floated in fact with a shareholder who 
whose background was, was mirrored in printer's ink and the grind of daily presses. It was the worst Australian newspapers. I can't tell you the satisfaction today, after 50 years, to be responsible for putting them back together again. Seven's investment and TVW's investment in the West is terrific and all of us at Seven are proud to be a shareholder in a company with such a rich heritage with both Seven and the West together and they're both committed not only to being loud for a long time to the very best qualities in journalism and the very best qualities in entertainment. And whether um, you like what Channel Seven does in its presentation of news and community activities Everybody accepts, I think, that telethon and a Christmas pageant are part of our, our heritage and they're part of also who we are today. Those two great icons have been maintained as only Channel 7 in Perth could have done. Every other single station in the country gave up their community involvements in those sort of activities. But Channel 7 in Perth stuck by it and stuck by it because as each generation of Channel 7 people have come along, they've picked up the baton and actually raised the bar. And we go back and we look back with nostalgia tonight at the great things Seven has achieved. But I also commend to you to look at what we currently do. And if you go and look at the telethon we've just completed, how professional that was, we are the only station left in the country that still runs a telethon. And we built on a heritage that was handed down by the people who are there today. And the people at Seven today are every bit as good as who they've taken the baton from. I can say the future of free-to-air television, um, the, the, the rumours of its death are very premature. Um, we believe free-to-air television has a very exciting future. We go in now to a multi-channeling environment where free-to-air stations will be able to offer more channels than they have before, more entertainment, and be able to satisfy the public. And I think this will give all of free to air television a whole new lease of life. And when you look at TVW and its heritage, and the people who have come out of this station today, who are the most senior executives in our country, Tim Warner came out of the Seven Newsroom, runs our entire production and, and programming. Um, we have um, even Peter Meekin was taught in our newsroom here, as was Brad Lyons, who's in charge of production. And of course, some leave us, which is always a bit of heartburn. David Mott went and decided to run Channel 10. He's done a pretty good job. And it's always, you always feel sad when one of them get away. I hope you've listened to that, David. Hopefully, Channel 7 will continue to reflect the taste of the West Australian audience. And I think as long as our news or current affairs department have the quality of people running them and representing them, I think they will. Today, in, in, in Sean Mangola and in, in Mario Dorazio, we have the equal of two great producers who I think still have lots to contribute to the network in this company. And I think they too will go far because they know how to put together what this city needs. And the one thing we've learned over the years, anybody who understands what Perth needs and does it properly is really going to be successful in the East. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.